so great to see you all here. So great to have been invited to share a few thoughts with you. Um, when I first started, I was very similar to Chris in many ways, in that I knew I had to speak to people, but I didn't know what to say. And I learned a few phrases of what to say, how to make the first approach. But I still wasn't using those phrases. And that was because I was terrified of not being able to handle any of the questions that people asked. I, I knew that if I made an approach, then it w a conversation would follow, but what am I going to do then? And I read an absolutely brilliant book um, years and years ago, still available today, by a guy called Alan Pease, Questions Are the Answers, which I would highly recommend. And a lot of what I use today that I've developed since reading this has come from this book. It's a very thin book. There's a CD that you can buy that is in parallel with it, which I would strongly recommend. Um, because what I discovered is it's not just being able to answer people's questions that's important. It's about how you handle the moment when people ask these questions. And I'm going to take you through some of the typical questions people will ask, questions that you've probably been asked if you've made approach people, questions probably the first time that you've been asked them, you made a mess of handling just as I did, and that uh, left a residual terror in your heart for uh, continuing to approach people. It's really important that we know how to handle these questions, not just so that you approach people, but so that you can help your people overcome their own inhibitions as they join your business, because this is the big thing that people have inhibitions about. It's about making that initial approach. And the truth is, it has to be a conversation. And it has to be a conversation about what could be in it for the person that we're talking to. So I just want to take you through a few simple ideas on how we handle some of these very important questions. I need to get my um, zapper for the slides, which by sheer miracle is here. So the, sim the single most commonly asked question is, what is it? You make the first approach, use one of the phrases that you get in the first steps to manage a manual or from any of my material or anything, what, anything your upline says, simple approaches. And one of the most common comebacks is, what is it? Or a variant on that. Um, what's it all about? That kind of thing. Now, when you first start, there's a real danger when somebody asks this question because they are opening a bear pit right in front of you for you to dive straight in because we feel compelled to tell them everything we have learnt to that moment about aloe vera, about Forever Living, about the network marketing industry, about Rex Morn, his children, their children, where he buys his suits, where he prefer, which seat number he prefers when he flies on a plane, if we've learned that. And we just dive in and start regurgitating all this information which we find exciting, but our prospect at this moment is going to find totally irrelevant. They did not want a presentation. They just wanted, really what they wanted to know was, is there going to be something in this for me that makes it worth me listening further? So we need to handle this question as well as answering the question. There comes a point, a pivot point, in any conversation, prospecting conversation we have, where if we start to go into presentation mode before this pivot point, it's going to feel to our prospect like we are selling them. After the pivot point, when they know there could be something in it for them, and we give them the information, they will be ready and open to absorb it. We need to get to that pivot point before we start presenting. If you start presenting, and it it will feel like you're presenting if you use the words network marketing, forever living, or aloe vera at this 
stage, except in the way that I'm going to show you. But you will know that if you've listed all these things, that you're actually in presentation mode. And as soon as somebody feels that you're trying to sell them something, what are they going to do? They're going to shut down. I do. If it for a moment feels that somebody is going to try and sell me something, the answer is no. I don't even know what they're trying to sell me. I'll give you an example of what happens. You know you walk down the high street of any town these days, there's some guys in tabards trying to get you to sign up to a direct debit to a charity. We've all seen that. Probably a, a laudable charity, it would be Oxfam or Macmillan or something like that. It's a charity I will be supporting anyway. The principles I would support and I would financially support them. And also I'm a professional networker. My job is to engage in conversation with people wherever I can. However, if I see one of these people with a tabard on, here's what my reaction is. I suddenly quicken my pace. I steer to the other side of the pedestrianized zone. I don't engage eye contact. When they are zooming over to cut me off near, near the wall, the hand goes up and says, sorry, I haven't got time. I try and be courteous about it, but the hand tells them, no. That, and I'm a networker, a professional networker, and I am driven to say no. And that's because I know I'm about to be sold. It's a charity I'd be happy to buy, but it's, so it's not about what they're selling, it's about the way they are going about it. And if I go into presentation mode at this point, the answer will be no. And they are not saying no to forever, they are saying no to you because of the way that we've approached it. So here's how I handle this question. And it's a really simple way of doing it. I'm going to give you the phrases, and I would encourage you to learn these phrases, commit them to memory, so that when you're in the situation, you can use them, and you can concentrate on the tone that you use. So when somebody says, what is it? I simply say, the company's called Forever. Have you ever heard of them? I smile. It's a, it's a gentle tone, and I ask a question. Now, the truth is, I don't really mind whether they've heard of them or not. It's not going to affect what happens next. What this is about is controlling the mood of the conversation. By asking them a question and in initiating a response, a return response, it feels like a conversation that they are participating in, not like a presentation from me to them. If I present to them, they'll feel like I'm selling. If I ask them a question, it feels like I'm interested. And I am interested. Companies called forever, have you heard of them? So they'll say yes or no. Now people say, um, I would say, whenever I've approached somebody these days, about 80% of people say no, they haven't heard of them. And that's great, I just go on to the next step. But two out of 10 people will say yes, they have heard of them. So I have to ask a supplementary question because I want it to continue to feel like a conversation. Great. T tell me what you know about them. How much do you know about them? And notice I'm, I'm pleased that they know something. I'm not defensive. My tone is one of excitement. Not insane excitement, but just general pleased excitement. And I'm going to listen to what they say. And I'm going to show them I'm listening by my body language. And these are the things that I have to do. However, whatever they're saying, I have to have eye contact. I have to have a benign expression. If you concentrate on their words or you think about what they're saying next, you're going to frown. And that looks, they will interpret that as if you disapprove of what they're saying. We don't want them to feel that. We just want them to feel free to talk. And so we need to concentrate on having a benign expression on our face, an eye contact. Think to yourself, don't frown. Don't frown. Smile. Nod. When they talk, nod. You'll see journalists do this. You know, they're interviewing a politician. They ask a question. Politician says what they had prepared. And the journalist then doesn't say anything, they just smile and nod, and the politician goes on and says something that they hadn't prepared, which is the interesting bit. But that's a really useful technique, and it's not a great big learning thing about communication skills. 
you, all you've had to learn to be a good communicator in that way is to learn to have eye contact, to smile, to nod, and keep your mouth shut. That's it. A lot of people think good communication is about having the gift of the gab. It's not. It's about having the gift that allows others to gab to you. That's going to be the secret of success. So we encourage them, how much do you know about them? They will talk. Now, it could be, some people say, will say, um, tell me what you know about them. And some people say, uh, oh, well, I've just heard of them. And the truth is, they evidently haven't heard of them. They just thought that's what you wanted them to say. And so they say, you just have to skip on with that. Say, oh, that's OK. Pretend that they've heard of them. Some people might have been to a, a launch, or they might have been approached by the business previously, or they might have used the products, or well, I don't know, whatever they say. And it might have been a really positive experience, or they might have been approached by some drongo, and it's been a real negative experience. You know, who knows? Let's find out what it was. Drongo is a technical expression, by the way. So, I'm going to listen to. Um, what they say, and if they he he have heard about forever, I'm not going to engage at this stage with what I said. I'm going to say, if they have heard about forever, I'll say, well, as you know, and then I'll skip onto my script. If they haven't heard about forever, I just admit the as you know bit. Say so they're a really unusual company in that for their marketing, they don't have employees, they have partners which means that you can choose your own hours, you can work from wherever you like, and you can even set your own level of income. So notice what I've done there with the grammar. It's not a grammatical sentence. When you speak, it doesn't really matter. And notice what I did with my hands as well as I was speaking. Say, so, a really unusual company, end up for their marketing, they don't have employees, they have partners. Pointed to myself. Which means that you can choose your own hours with my hands, and this is bringing them into the fold of what's in it for them, because really the only thing the prospect cares about is what could be in it for them. And it doesn't matter a jot about the how many billions we turn over, how long we've been going. At this stage, the prospect needs to know, is there something in this for me? Don't tell me what you know they are thinking. Tell me what you can do for me. So. I've told them now what could be in it for them, just in my three bullet points. Work from wherever you like, choose your own hours, set your own level of income. There are the three benefits, the USPs we heard, heard earlier. And it's at this point that we arrive at the pivot point. And you can see it in their eyes, and they might lean forward or their eyes open, oh. And so then we go on to the presentational part, which is only very short. So obviously, I can't go into too much detail now, but here's what we can do. And either we can get together over a cup of coffee, take 20 minutes, I can show you what it's all about, or we can actually have a Skype call if they're somewhere overseas, you can have a Skype call, or I've got a five minute video, an online video I could send you. You could have a look and then we could have a much more of a conversation in detail. Which would be best for you? Which would you prefer? I'm giving them these three options for them to choose from. Notice there isn't the option not to talk about it further. Notice also I've used the word obviously. Obviously I can't go into too much detail about it at the moment. It's not obvious, but what I've found is that if you use the word obviously, they just accept that and they say, oh yeah, obviously. <laughs> and it's more likely that you will move them on to the next stage because as a professional networker, our job is to move them to the next stage in the cycle where they will be getting more information. We need to get them to commit a certain amount of time and mind space to developing, to, to learning about the information so they can develop an understanding of the business. So the company's called Forever. Have you heard of them? Listen to what they say. Well, as you know, they're a very uh, they're a really remarkable company in that they don't have, for their marketing, they don't have employees, they have partners, which means that you can choose your own hours, you can work from wherever you like, um, you can even set your own level of, uh, of income. Obviously, I can't go into too much detail about it now, but what I'd really love to do 
is to either, well, either get together with you for 20 minutes, I can show you what it's all about, we can have a cup of coffee, or we could schedule a Skype call, or I've got a, an online video, I can send you a link to have a look at that, and then we can have another, another conversation about it. Now, notice I'm saying a conversation about it, because at this stage, we need to be making sure we will be following up by having a verbal conversation. Even if you trigger this prospecting conversation or, or with a text-based thing like Facebook, Messenger, or something like that, you cannot continue it handling their questions using Facebook. It has to be a conversation. People can just go too quiet, drift off. They're not giving you their attention. Anybody in this room that thinks the telephone is an outdated technology is making a grave mistake. Because conversation is not just about the words, as in text-based based media. It is about the tone of voice. Because only tone of voice and body language convey our intention. Text-based messaging does not convey our intention, so it's so easy for intention to be misinterpreted. We have to, if we want to make a success of our business, get good at delivering a positive intention with our tone of voice and our body language. So I ask them which they prefer, and we fix up an appointment. And that's it. That's the job done. It's important at this stage not to dive in and start presenting. We just, having fixed it up, my next line is, well, what are you going to do with the rest of the day? What have you got planned for the rest of the day? And we change the subject, and we move on. So then there are loads of other questions. The, the, as we know, we've just learned, the most asked, most frequently asked question is what is it? But there are other questions, and many of you will have had them. We need to understand that these questions sometimes have been triggered by our inexperience in the tone of voice that we've used. Or we've used text-based conversation when it should have been a conversation. So we need to learn that maybe we've triggered these. We need to learn how to avoid a lot of these questions in the first place. So they don't get asked, and then if you haven't avoided it, and they do get asked, how to handle them anyway. So I just want to briefly take you through these things. These are some of the questions, and you will know them. So is it selling? I think that's the second most frequently asked question. Um, is it pyramid selling? Um, how much is it going to cost me? You might have had this one. How much are you making? Done with a kind of sneer. These questions tell us that we have implanted a seed of suspicion in the mind of our prospects. Had we approached them using the tone of voice that I've just been sharing with you and the words that I've just been sharing with you, it is very, very likely we wouldn't have got any of these questions. So it's really important to practice how to approach somebody, to keep it simple, not to go into presentation mode, because then we'll avoid these. However, if we are inexperienced, which inevitably we all are when we first start, and we do trigger these, we know, need to know how to handle them. However, if you get any of these questions, it's important to think about several things. First of all, not to get defensive. The second thing is, just to make a mental note, ah, I could have triggered that. I need to just go back after this conversation and look at the structure of the conversation. Did I use words that triggered this? Can I learn from this so to make it less likely? Now, all prospects are different. Uh, and some people are very, very naturally suspicious anyway. And some people are, are totally open and not at all suspicious. So it's, some people are always going to ask these. Occasionally, somebody is going to ask these questions. And it may not be you that's triggered it. Maybe their life's experience. But somewhere in between, there are these people that we are just moving them. And they're just feeling, oh, it's a bit uneasy. And so these questions tell us we've, we may well have triggered that. It's usually the tone of voice or the clumsiness of the words or that we've most likely slipped into presentation mode too early. So they ask this, and I think, OK, I've triggered suspicion. I need to find out why I've triggered it. And it's usually that something I've said has brought up some memory that they were a bit uncomfortable about, some previous experience. So I need to find out what it is. And I find that out by asking them a question. And I say, that's an interesting question. What makes you ask that? Now, these words are very, very important, because I could say, what makes you ask that? 
and it's a very different thing that will actually trigger them to be defensive. So I have to say, that's an interesting question. And sound as if I find it an interesting question. <laughs> not, not, oh, you know, I've been asked that a million bloody times so far <laughs> this month, you know. What on earth has made you ask that? That's not the good way to approach it. That's a kind of bad tone. It's a non-productive tone. That's an interesting question. What makes you ask that? John Curtis is brilliant at uh, using this phrase. I got this phrase from John Curtis. And you always know when you're, when you're in trouble with John because he gets a really benign manner in his voice. And he says, that's an interesting question, Andy. And I thought, oh, bloody hell, what have I done now? <laughs> that's an interesting question. That's an interesting question. What, what makes you ask that? And look like you're interested. And here's how this is a brilliant killer network marketing tip. You have to make it look like you're interested. So here's how to do this, brilliant technique. What you have to do is be interested. <laughs> and as, as soon as you become interested in people, then your face and your manner conveys that you're interested. So all that kind of matching body language and all that kind of stuff, you don't need to worry about that, it will happen naturally. So let them tell you their story. Actively listen, encourage, from Alan Pease's book and CD. He uses what I call vocal encouragers. So as well as the eye contact, as well as the nodding. Uh-huh. Oh. So Alan Pease teaches these, just little noises. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh. Uh-huh. Really? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. They won't notice that you've just put a little CD on of sound effects. Uh-huh. Oh, and you let them listen. You, you listen to their whole story. You let them tell you their whole story. And they get it out, and by them getting it out, it ceases to be a suspicion in their mind. So you can just move on from it. You don't have to, even have to address it. All you have to say, so it's something about, oh, I once had um, my friend's mother's cat's dog walker had, um, came across one of these things, and uh, it sounded a bit like that. And I just listen, encourage, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And then, crikey. Now, I say crikey, but you can say whatever word you like. Um, crikey, well, it's, it's not like any of that at all. And then, this is the really important phrase. So I say it's not like that. Obviously, I need to now convey to them that I'm not going to present to them. I'm not trying to convince them. I just want to bring them on board. So obviously, Obviously, I don't know if it's for you, only you can decide that. But I think if you can see what I can see, you'll be just as excited as I am. And you'll see their body language change. And it will move from suspicion to being more open. And when it's more open, then we just go on to how to handle a what is it question. The company's called Forever, have you ever heard of them? We're back in a conversation. We've asked them, have they ever heard of the company, and then we handle it in exactly the way that we handle the rest. Companies called Forever, have you ever heard of them? Yes, no, maybe, whatever they say. Well, as you know, or not as you know, Forever's a really unusual company in that for their marketing, they don't have employees, they have partners, which means that you can choose your own hours, you can work from wherever you like, you can even set your own level of income. Obviously, I can't go into too much detail now, um, but what I'd really love to do is get together with you for 20 minutes or so, over a cup of coffee, show you what it's all about, or, or we could have a Skype call, 20 minutes, or I could send you an online video link, have a look at that, and then we can have another conversation, see what you make of it all, which would be best for you. Now, you notice I didn't need to read that off the script, and that's because these are the words I use. And these are the words I use to move my prospects through the system. So that's it, really. There are only two, there are many, many questions that people can ask, but there are only really two ways of moving things forward. That's an interesting question. Or companies called Forever, have you ever heard of them? I hope that's been useful. I hope you've taken lots of notes. And I hope you start using these phrases and it will improve your prospecting results. Thank you very much.